get this started. Episode B. Get this live up and running. What's going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome. How you doing, the Cam Factor? How you doing? Welcome. Let's see where Michelle is at. Uh, guest speaker for today. Got to get her on here. How you doing? Hello. It's Friday. Welcome to the end of the week. Payday for some. Glad to hear it. There she is, Michelle. Let me go ahead. All right. How you doing? Lost and accessories. Welcome. Hey, can you hear me? Hello. Hi, how you doing? Can you hear me okay? Yes. Right, perfect. Perfect, perfect. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Right. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, welcome. I'm really glad to uh, have you. Um, on this second episode of our Golden Glossary series uh, for career coaching. Um, this is episode B, and we're going to be talking about authenticity in the workplace. My name is Anthony Dongfrak. I'm the founder and CEO of Golden Goals Career Coaching. And uh, if you could just introduce yourself and let the people know who you are and what you do. So I'm Michelle Edwards. I am a HR game changer, uh, redefining what HR means. Um, and I'm a diversity, equity, and inclusion um, specialist. And um, I am vice president of human resources at Heartbeat, which is a pharma advertising company. Okay, amazing, amazing. Love to hear that. Um, this conversation, like I said, is going to be about authenticity in the workplace. So we're talking about, you know, how to really show up. Um, at your workplace as your real self, as your true self, and how to navigate, you know, those different workspaces where, you know, and, and the big reason is why I even wanted to do this topic is because that's something that we definitely, I've definitely struggled with, and I know a lot of people around me have struggled with, is, you know, there's, sometimes it seems like there's two versions of yourself, there's that professional self, and then there's your true self, right, and you don't know whether or not you can really put yourself um, in the workplace and really be that version of yourself without, also being professional. And sometimes those sides of yourself may not be seen as professional by your white counterparts because people like us, you know, we might want to, you might want to, you know, relax or be loose or even like, you know, things like natural hair, you know, those things may not be quote unquote acceptable in the eyes of our white counterparts or our white employers. And it's a really important conversation on how to go about uh, tackling those topics when it comes to applying for a job and actually being in your workplace. Um, so we have some questions, and anyone who's watching right now, please feel free to ask a question in the comments section, um, and we'll be happy to answer them as we continue discussing. Uh, but we do have some questions that our audience already gave to us um, before this live, uh, so we'll start just answering some of those questions as we continue our discussion. Uh, so the first question that we were given is, where does the line draw between being yourself and being professional? So I find that um, being yourself, um, when they say you, when they when they say that being yourself is not professional, I think there's some bias in that um, because you know I think you could still be yourself and be professional at the same time. So that's that's there's a lot of bias behind that, you know, mm -hmm. with um, thinking that um, people of color can't be themselves and be professional. Um, I think that we tend to code switch because we want to um, fit into the dominant paradigm, um, which is, you know, white culture. Mm -hmm. And so we tend to, you know, talk different and use different dialect when we're in the office um, because that's quote unquote professional. But I do believe that we could be ourselves 
and still be professional. Um, so like I show up, I listen, I spent like 15 years code switching and not being authentic. Um, but that shit is dead to me now, <laughs> you know, like I'm coming, ex you know, accept me for who I am, because if you are able to come to the table as your true self, that's when you can do your best work. Amen. Amen. I really, I really agree with that. Um, I definitely know, you know, in my own experiences, I definitely kind of have to put on that more professional version of myself because, you know, my regular self is very laid back, you know, I'm very chill, you know, I, I like to talk, but I also don't like to talk at the same time. But when I got to put myself in that interview, uh, I really put on the best version of myself. But, you know, sometimes it just takes a little bit of self-reflection to also realize that that is another part of your true self. Um, and when I really come into that and really just be honest about, you know, who I am, what my experiences have been, um, and be able to relay how those things have made me, have shaped me into the person I am to the interviewer, they'll actually appreciate that a lot more um, because they really get to know, they, they feel like, and I've had, you know, interviewers tell me this, like they feel like they know me just through the interview alone because I'll be able to talk about so many different things in my experience who that, you know, in, in, in past I might not have thought those things were things that you could share, things like struggles, things like hardship, things like, oh, why is there a gap in your experience? Things like, why do you keep you know, hopping around from job to job? But there might be reasons, there might be circumstances, the pandemic just happened. So a lot of people's resumes in the past two years kind of look different than what they might have expected. Um, but when you be honest and open about those things, just show how those things really shaped you and helped you develop. And maybe even what some of the things you did during those times or during those gaps actually talk you know, what they actually say about you as a person as your character and as a professional uh they'll really appreciate that and then it'll it'll definitely go to show that you have a lot more depth um as an employee and as a person uh when it comes to their actually you know vetting you with their within their own hiring management team uh so that's definitely very important and i'm glad you mentioned code switching because that was another that was another thing that was uh mentioned in the questions that we had um, and the first question about that was just, is code switching still necessary, which you essentially said no to. Um, but I wanted to have a conversation about, and I had a conversation about this with another uh, person on a podcast, um, when it comes to like our, you know, people that look like us and hair, uh, and also just, you know, ways to dress when you come into an interview. So if there's a company that you really want to get into, maybe it's a top tier company or Fortune 500, or it's just, it's your dream company, right? And you don't know who who the interviewer is, or you maybe you do know, and they're looking of the you know the white complexion, and they might look a little bit old school, and they might be you know from way back when, and you you know you're not sure if they're gonna you know really appreciate uh, your natural look, which you may be proud of, right? Um, but you know a lot of people coming up, um, especially younger folks, don't know if it's acceptable you know to have your hair out or to have your hair looking how you want it, or to dress um, the way you want, you know, the, the general professional fit might be for a man might be the, general, the black suit, the white shirt, the black tie, but maybe, you know, a guy like myself wants to wear the navy blue suit with the black turtleneck, um, and then like a nice little pocket square and look real professional that way, but that might not be accepted. So how do we go about representing ourselves in those aspects when it comes to hair, when it comes to uh, accessories, when it comes to the way you dress in an interview, should you, should you try to kind of downplay yourself in order to maximize your opportunity or should you just be yourself and not really worry about the repercussions? Listen, here's the thing. <laughs> Co <laughs> you know, all this is code switching. The hair, the way you speak, the way you dress, like all of it. And here's the thing, like, we needed to code switch to get in the door. Mm -hmm. We needed to code switch for survival sometimes. We needed to code switch um, to, you know, dispel the stereotypes that people hold for us and people of color, people that look like us. And, um, and I get it. Like, it was definitely a survival mechanism. But now I'm at a point where I'm like, damn that, this is a new day and age. Um, we have to require that corporate America accept us for who we are, accept all of us for everything that we bring to the table. Because if we're so consumed with 
you know, we have to wear our hair this way so we don't offend someone. We need to talk this way so we don't offend someone. We need to dress a certain way so we fit in. We need to pretend that we care about some of these, um, the culture things that, you know, that we don't care about. Like all of that is exhausting. Very. <laughs> it is exhausting. And if you could release all of that and not have to worry about that and just come as you are. Everybody else comes as they are. Why can't we come as we are? So right. when we realize we can come as we are, that is when we could really do our best work. We could really show up because let me tell you something. <laughs> black, <laughs> black people are the shit. Like black excellence <laughs> is a real thing. Like we come with our own talents and own brightness and our own ideas and um, if we're able to just bring that to the table, I feel like the the products and services that our companies, you know, release to the public are more innovative. It's more creative. And so that's why I don't feel like we need to code switch anymore. And I get it. I get why people do it. But I feel like we need to demand that corporate America, we need to teach them to accept us for who we are, because I think that those all those decades of code switching has actually probably done more damage than good. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, when it comes to that, and in terms of how we can teach them or how we can essentially demand, you know, that the corporate America really accept us for who we are, you know, how, how can we go about that? How can the average person that looks like us go about that who may not feel like they might necessarily have that kind of voice. Um, and, and, and the next question that actually goes into, kind of go, goes into that is like, at what point is it on the employees to actually encourage and create that authentic environment and how can they go about that as well? Well, that's why I created my page. My page is really for um, corporations, leaders, CEOs, presidents, HR folks, because it is up to us. It is up to the leaders of the company to create an environment where all are welcome, where you can not only bring your yourself, your full self to work, but you could also, you, you're also, you're not only accepted, but you're also celebrated. Like you mm -hmm. also appreciate it. Um, you're valued for your differences. Um, and I think that is up to corporate America and corporations to create that environment. And it's not something that could happen overnight. It's, it does, it is a slow, um, uh, you know, uphill battle to create that environment because it didn't mm -hmm. happen for us, you know, at mm -hmm. Heartbeat, you know, we have an environment where we don't have to code switch, um, but it didn't happen overnight. It happened over several years, mm -hmm. but I think it's up to corporate America to make that happen. And, and for us to not settle, to just be ourselves, but do our best work do mm -hmm. our damn best work, do our best, be, be our most creative and talented selves, but don't compromise being yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. I 100% agree with you. Um, what about imposter syndrome? What are, your, what are your thoughts on that? I know we all hear about this term, imposter syndrome, you know, and what that means, you know, and, and for anyone that don't, don't, doesn't know, essentially it's, you know, coming into a position, uh, whether that's a corporate position, whether that's a leadership position, executive position, et cetera, and not feeling like you're either supposed to be there or not feeling like you can do what you're, uh, you were elected to do or not feeling like your own accomplishments that led you to that point where you're on. You know, what are your thoughts on imposter syndrome and, how, and what is your advice for anyone that may be experiencing imposter syndrome? Yeah, imposter syndrome is a big thing. I mean, I feel like no matter what level you get to, you still kind of have that, mm -hmm. right? And um, I myself struggled with imposter syndrome. Um, and actually, it actually took some of my senior leaders to, you know, create the space for me to be able to, you know, voice my opinions and be a part of the conversation. Because when I first got invited to the room, because you know, it's it's hard <laughs> to get in that room, <laughs> to, get, to get a seat at that table, yeah. it's hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. But once you finally get there, you do have a little bit of imposter syndrome, like, 
oh, they finally let me in. Like, oh, oh, I can't mess up because they're going to kick me out or they're going to notice I shouldn't be here or, you know, something like that. And um, right. it actually took my senior leaders to help me out of that, honestly. Um, but what I would say to people who are struggling with imposter syndrome is that embrace, I always say this, embrace your badassness. Because you know you are good. You know you are subject matter expert. You know you are talented at whatever it is that you do. You know you are bringing a lot to the table. And just sit in that. Sit in that. Like, really sit in that. Like, some of us have a hard time sitting in that and accepting that we are some, you know, we're some bad member chairmen. <laughs> it's like, we have a hard time. We have a hard time, like, really accepting that because, we never we we rarely see people that look like us mm -hmm. in these really senior levels and in positions of authority. For so, when you always see that, you start to believe that you're not good enough. Right. But you are. You mm -hmm. are. You're better than enough. Amen. Absolutely, and it's it's interesting because you know a lot of a lot of my friends, a lot of people around me. Uh, I have moments like this with myself. I've been able to get over it, you know, for the most part. But uh, even I, you know, even I, and victims of this at times, you know, it's like when you're coming to either you're coming out of college or you're trying to break a new market in terms of an industry, um, and it comes time to you know restart that job application process, that job search, and you know, it's like people are afraid um, to really apply for those jobs, or really to reach out to someone that they might know. Uh, that's in that company because, or is especially if they're of a higher position, a C-suite level or executive, whatever, but you met them through a family member or you at your workplace or, uh, you know, on the street, wherever, you know, and they, they reached out to you and said, hey, you know, uh, um, they gave you the business card or they gave you the contact information. They said, yo, contact me. You know, I'm available. Obviously, they're probably a very busy person, but, you know, you're looking at this person that's of this, you know, higher position and you're, you know, you may just be a college student, you may just be a recent graduate, uh, you may even just be in high school, but you're just you're trying to get an internship, you're trying to get a job, and you don't feel that you're, either you don't feel that you're worthy, or you feel like they're too busy for you, um, for you to reach out, and it stops people from making that, they, making that connection, making that, taking that initiative, um, based on what the person already said, to actually, you know, have a conversation with them, and see how they can actually get connected to an opportunity at the company this person is when they already have a level of, of esteem and, and, and status at this position, professionally speaking. Um, and I noticed that all the time, you know, I, it was a common phenomenon uh, that I noticed when I was uh, leading events at my college and we would have like, say I was leaving a pre-med group um, and we had uh, med students come around and they would come talk to the students and they would leave their contact information on the board. And they say, hey, reach out to me. You know, I really love to tell you guys you know, how to essentially, you know, guide you towards the, med, you know, getting to med school. And no one will reach out to them. And I noticed that because then when I started, I actually spoke at my first uh, college event and I left my contact information. And everyone said they want to talk to me. Everyone said that they want to get some advice from me. And then I left my information. I even left my personal phone number and they didn't reach out. And I was like, you know, what's going on? What's, what's the disconnect? And I noticed that that's, you know, I've been on now that I've been on both sides of that. It's like there's this assumption that I, you're just not going to be able to get there, or you're not worthy of of getting there, or having that connection. And I know that a lot of people struggle with that because I've seen people struggle with that. I've seen people not be able to sit in the fact that they are amazing, that they are dope, that they are capable of all these things. Um, and it's just about being able to get over that hump and. I feel like it's probably going to take different things for everybody. You know, obviously there's things like therapy, there's things like motivation, obviously a support system, whether or not you have a support system, uh, or really just, gen you know, generally taking the time to self-reflect on who you are, what you've accomplished. But, you know, there's so many people, like a lot, a lot of my past clients as well, you know, they, they have so many dope accomplishments, so many dope accolades, they've done so much, you know, and their resume doesn't even speak on that. And, and, I'm, and I'm talking to them about it, and I'm like, yo, you – did all this stuff. You did A through Z, but you only talked about, you know, A, M, and Z. You missed a whole bunch in the middle, you know, what's going on? Um, so that's a, you know, that's a big thing that a lot of people, whether they're on an executive level or they're still in college, are all struggling with this process, like you said. So it's just really interesting. And I, 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 I pray that we all get to that point where we really get over the hump and really just be able to exude the excellence that we genuinely all have inside us. 
you know something? A lot of people like to have their ego stroked, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> and so, like, if you're coming out of college or you're coming in the job market or you want to get into this new field or whatever it is, and you find people that are like experts that's been in, in doing the thing you want to do for years and years and years and you want to learn from them and you reach out to them they are flattered honestly mm -hmm. they are flattered when you reach out to them and you ask them about themselves people like talking about themselves so <laughs> so um like i think we need to get out of our heads and just you know make that connection um, build that Rolodex. <laughs> I say Rolodex. So I put, people on the call probably don't even know what that is. <laughs> I don't age myself. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, build a contact list on your iPhone. That's what I mean. <laughs> but um, yeah, just just make that leap. Uh, take that leap and you know reach out to people that you feel like you're gonna get something out of. Um, because people love that. They love mm -hmm. when people are looking up to them and asking them for advice. They love talking about themselves and how they did something. So, mm -hmm. yeah, get out of your head and just just go for it. Right. And also realize that, you know, if, if you did have that type of experience, whether, you know, whatever professional, you know, came up to you or you met them at a, at, at a speaking engagement or you met them at a conference, et cetera, you know, if they gave you the contact information or they put it up on the board and just say, hey, contact me, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have done that if they didn't want to be contacted. Obviously, they'll be busy. You know, they may even say, you know, hey, it's going to take more than one email to reach out to me because I am busy, but I also do want to talk to you. You know, mm -hmm. and, some, and some people will be will genuinely be like, hey, you know, I, I am very busy, but I will make time for you because more likely than not, they've been in your position and they know what it's like to be in that position mm -hmm. and they know how hard it is. So when you reach out to them, they're going to really appreciate it, like you just said, you know. So don't believe that they're too busy for you. Don't believe that you're not worthy of speaking to that person and that you're not worthy of that position that they could connect you to because you are, you absolutely are. And you wouldn't be in those spaces if you weren't, if you weren't worthy. Um, and that's just the absolute truth about that. Yeah. Um, it, you know, years ago, the founder of my current company, he pulled me to side when he was about to resign because we uh, got bought by a larger company and um, he knew he was leaving. He was like, um, I need you to set up time with this person because this is going to be somebody who is going to make a difference in your career. And I need you to mm. get in front of that person. And I need you to tell that person all the great things you've been doing. So that was the greatest advice. It was hard for me to do <laughs> when he told me to do it. I was like, huh, no, I don't want to. <laughs> but um, it was the greatest advice ever. Mm -hmm. It's like you find out the people who are going to make a difference in your career. You get in front of them. Right. Absolutely. The next question we have listed says, how do we become aware of when we're not being authentic in the workplace? How do you become aware? Mm -hmm. I mean, if, for me personally, um, I have, I have for, the, for the thing that I do on the day to day and that's to take care of the people, like mm -hmm. I have to be authentic. And if I catch myself not being authentic, like, I have to take a step back. Because my actions have to line up with how I truly feel. Mm -hmm. I have to be able to sleep at night because I'm in a role where I care for the people. Like I'm, the people are in my care. Their growth, development, their health, their wellness, all of that is under my care. And mm -hmm. I don't have the luxury of messing around with that. That's why I always have to be authentic with myself. I I have to be able to sleep at night. I have to be able to do right by my people. So I would say, like, if you feel like there's a disconnect between your actions and how you truly feel, um, I think you need to take a moment and take a step back and come back as yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, the, le the next question actually kind of played on what you said, um, but the question was, to what extent do you allow your principles and morals to dictate your job performance? Um, but, you know, you kind of already mentioned it, you know, it, it, they should align, you know. They, they should, should align. Be, they should and be. It, in it, yes. 
And if they don't, the day they don't, that's the day I resign because <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not about to be out here doing stuff or having somebody force me to do stuff that don't right. align with my values. It's right. just not going to happen. I Absolutely. can't. And that's, and I think that's what sets me apart from a lot of HR leaders. Like, you're not going to have me doing nothing crazy. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. You're not going to have me trying to make a case against this person or do that. No, that's not, that's not me. That's not who I am. And right. um, I'm always people first. And I think HR leaders need to figure out that you could be people first and still be protecting the company. Because mm. if you are protecting the experience of your employees, if you are looking out for them, if their best interest is in mind at all times, you are protecting the company. By doing that, you are protecting the company because the employees are doing their best work for you. The employees are showing up for you. The employees, if they got to work nights and weekends, they'll do it mm -hmm. because of how... The, the feeling you make them feel every day, how you make them feel, how you make them realize that you care about them personally, then they're going to care about the company. They're going to protect the company. They're going to look out for the company. They're going to do the, the best work. They're going to take care of the clients. Mm -hmm. So HR people got to figure that out. It's backwards. Right. And, and something that I feel like a, a big thing um, when it comes to looking at companies that you're interested in or companies that you're actually working for um, that gets glossed over is core values of the company and their actual mission of the company, but, and also how they actually act on that mission. Do they actually do what they say they're, they're trying to do or what they're supporting or who the people, the audience that they're trying to impact. So I think, you know, I, I tell people that it's very important um, to either ask in an interview or ask, you know, in an informational interview outside where you're speaking to a, an employee um, of the company you're trying to join, you know, ask them, you know, what are the core values and do they actually, uh, do they actually align with, you know, with what they're saying their core values are? Um, you know, if, if you if their core values don't align with your core values, it might not be a good fit for you. And that's, and they're kind of aligning that, you know, whether it's on the website, whether in a brochure, whether you're talking to a recruiter at a job fair, they're telling you, you know, what they're about. So if you're not aligning with what they're about and what they do and how they move as a company, uh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't join. Um, regardless, you know, obviously we all like to chase money. Obviously we like good benefits. Obviously we like to be stable, but at the end of the day, if you're not going to be happy where you are, you're not going to be, you're not going to be living out your purpose when you're there. It's not going to really be as good for you as another position at a company that does align with your values. So it's very important to ask whether it's in the interview or outside and you're speaking to someone that knows the company well, you know, ask them about the core values, ask them about the mission. If you're a community oriented person, ask about, do they do community service? You know, if they're, if they're a, uh, uh, if they're a company that says that they're really good with helping out with natural disaster or emergencies, ask them how they do that, you know, ask them how they go about following what they say they're really about. Um, you know how you could do that? Because, you know, companies, Say they put on a good face all the time. Let me tell you, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I've seen it. So you know, people get bamboozled all the time to show to, to and they show up to the company and they're like, "This mm -hmm. is not what I signed up for." But you know right. how you could do that? You can ask them if you could talk to the their predecessor predecessor predecessor. Mm. <laughs> now and that's the real deal. That person gonna yeah. tell you everything. <laughs> they gonna tell you the good, they bad, and the ugly. Yep. <laughs> the good, the bad, the ugly. Absolutely. Now, if they let you do that, then you know they real. Then you know they authentic. Right. That's a very good tip. I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I know. I would definitely, if I wasn't able to talk to someone that hadn't already been the company um, and had left, then I would. I, what I would do is I would go on Google and look for um, employee reviews of past employees. So that can also give you a good uh, insight. You're not able to speak to someone directly or within yeah. your network that are yeah. already within the company. Get some reviews and get like the general uh, uh, overview of what all those reviews are. If all those reviews are bad, it might not be a good for you. If all those reviews say that, oh, it's too fast paced, they're asking too much of your, or they're asking more of what your job description is, and you're just trying to do what your job description is, and you're not really trying to do all that extra stuff, it might be a little bit too high pressure for you. Try to find somewhere that's a little bit more lax or a little bit more structured, you know? So, and, and <laughs> I was very uh, intentional about that in my job search and making sure that I was 
not being played and they were in that what they were saying was actually valid is being able to do research on my own and check you know of the overall reviews because it's not customer it's not only customers that can look at reviews it's also uh, applicants and, and uh, potential employees you can look at the reviews of how these companies are treating their staff um and how they how the company treats their staff is very important to me as well because you know in this past year if people didn't already know they know now that mental health is absolute, absolutely important. So something I always made sure to ask in my interviews that I never asked before was how do you treat your staff in terms of mental wellness, mental health, um, when it comes to emergencies, when it comes to family events, when it comes to anything and taking time off for whatever cr crazy reason or even very just normal reason, life events, you know, that, that occur suddenly or planned. Um, how do you treat your staff when it comes to those things? So it's very important that you get a broad view, but also a specific view on the specific things that you care about, whether it's core value, whether it's benefits, whether it's how they treat their employees, whether it's how they treat their companies, whether it's what they do in the community. Make sure that you're getting all those perspectives and then you're not just focusing on one thing because you're just focusing on that one thing or that one good thing about the company or the fact that they're fortune 500 and they're amazing and everybody wants to work there you're gonna you're gonna let all these other negative red flags that you didn't know about fall under the radar till you actually get into the position like you said so it's very important yep yep um yeah fortune 500 doesn't always mean not all fortune 500 companies are made for black folks and i'm just leave it there Absolutely. Right there. My husband yep. was on Wall Street for years. He had to leave mm. because of um, how they treated black folks. But mm. yeah, um, <laughs> just because they Fortune 500, don't you know? <laughs> right, right. I hear you. I hear you. I'm with you. Um, but I feel like there were some questions in there in the chat. Yeah, yeah. There's a question. Yeah, there's the question in the chat. I think is from the Cam Factor. It says, for Michelle, do you ever feel scared that you might lose your job if you don't go if you don't go along to get along? How are you so brave? Have you always been this brave? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I would have to say, um, can you hear me? Okay, you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay, because um, <laughs> you froze up a little bit, so I don't know. Um, but. What I would say is that I have not always been brave. Um, there were times when the company was doing things that did not align with my values. Um, at the company, the company I was at before, um, I remember I had to let somebody go, a person of color, for some mm -hmm. cockamamie reason that you know a, a white male employee wrote an email about this this um person of color and off that one thing no investigation no warning no nothing um the white ceo wanted me to let her go <clears throat> i didn't i told him if he wanted to let her go he would have to let her go mm. um so i didn't do it but i still let it happen under my watch mm -hmm. um you know even at the company i'm at now there were some things that had happened um, with certain folks that happened under my watch. Um, mm -hmm. And it took me a few years to find my voice and to be brave enough to push back. And now I push back all the time. I'm like, nope, we're not doing that. Nope. <laughs> so um, without sacrificing my integrity, my dignity, my morals, my values, I got to show up every day. And I got to protect the people that work for us at, at all costs. And Absolutely. by me doing that, and even though I'm like, sometimes I could be going up against, you know, people that could let me go or fire me, me doing it, me doing that, they appreciate it later. They tell me all the time, they may, you know, they may be pissed at me in the moment, but they tell me all the time, you know, I, I appreciate that you keep us honest, that you keep aligned with our values. And that's Absolutely. what I got to hang my hat on. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I really respect that. I commend that a lot. Um, and it, it goes to show also because I believe, uh, is it Anna Capellan in the comments was saying, I've been under Michelle's care for nine years and she always checked in on my mental health before it became a trend. So that's, that's real, you know, showing before some real. Before it became a trend. Thank you, Anna. 
Thank you, Anna. Before it became a trend, I've been doing all the stuff that's trending now, like yeah. diversity and inclusion is a trend, and mental health is a, mm. is a trend since COVID. I've been doing all that. <laughs> so, so like you know it's Anna. real. Love you, that's Anna. Amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. I love that. I love that. As we know, that's that's real. You know, being on it before the trend. You know, um, I think I got on the mental health conversation wave in you know, like 2017 2018 before before it was becoming a real real trend mm -hmm. um and it, it kind of blew my mind you know because it, it wasn't something i really thought about you know it wasn't something i was always taught to just kind of hold your head up high and just keep moving you know because it, it's gonna be all right and 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 just to kind of you know put away your emotions and just succeed you know and not really worry about your mental health um and that, that that took a toll on me, you know. Uh, so I, I, I learned through conversation, through meeting other, you know, people that, look, especially people that look like me and that had gone through similar struggles as myself, you know, that it's it's important to recognize that part of yourself and recognize that it's not just physical health. It's not just uh, your image. It's not just uh, uh, what you're doing and, and your accolades and what's on your resume, but also your mental well-being because, you're not going to be able to really uh, align yourself with your values and really get into those positions that you want to do and actually perform the way you want to perform and be that authentic version of yourself if you're not being real with that mental aspect of yourself and you're not being real with your emotional health and you're not, you know, doing the steps that may be necessary for your emotional well-being to get you to the point where you can continue to uphold uh, the positions that you're about to take on and the uh, work uh, positions that you're about to take on and the massive level of interviews you may have to go, you know, you got to really check in with yourself sometimes. And it's, it's dope that you're doing that uh, with your peoples and, and making sure that, you know, they're okay and they're okay and they're able to handle what they got to handle um, because, you know, some people don't have that. And, and I, I don't know where I'd be without those people, you know? So it's, it's very important. It's extremely important. And, I'm yeah. glad that it's it's a conversation now, but I wish it was definitely a conversation way before because it would save a lot of people for sure. How can you expect people to do their best work if they're not well? Right. You got to make sure they're well so that they can do their best. Right. You Absolutely. take care of the people, the people take care of the company. It's Amen. really that simple. It's really that simple. <laughs> But it's an equation that a lot of people don't get. A lot of companies are not getting. They're not, they don't get it. Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, the Cam Factor said, now it's a trend, but have the way, but have the way you've shown up always been appreciated. Or you see more love to you now that it's a trend. And how do you keep from being resentful of that? <laughs> Damn, the Cam Factor. Cam <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I have not always been appreciated for how I showed up um, I feel like I got a lot of pushback um, you know from corporate <laughs> outside of our company corporate like telling us that we not you know we not aligned with all the things that we should be doing or we should do it that way and why are we go doing so much for the employees? Why are we spending that much? Why are we, you know, like, I always had to, like, answer the things. And I was always, like, almost, like, persecuted for how I was running my company in the a from the HR perspective. And um, I feel like I became appreciated now that it's trending because now it's like, oh, well, Michelle was on to something. Like, you know, let's see what. Then let's learn more. Let's learn how to do it now. Right. Absolutely. And Momo's HR Consulting said, Golden, you're a part of the generation that pushed accomplishments and accolades over mental health. Uh, yep. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, you know, kind of, you know, back on what I said before, uh, if I had continued to push, you know, my accomplishments and accolades over my mental health, I'd probably be in med school right now, struggling, about to drop out, to mm -hmm. be 100% honest, because I do want to be a doctor in the future. That's always been my dream. Um, 
But I would have gone, you know, straight to med school right after college and not even worried about how I was really burned out, you know, and how I would not have been able to show up for whatever patients I may have had, whatever uh, classes that I, I, you know, rigorous, rigorous, rigorous classes uh, that I would have had in med school if I had just gone straight, you know, and and way back, you know, back then I thought that was the only way to go. You know, I didn't know you could take gap years. I didn't know you could, you know, take a take a year off, take a two years off, work for a little bit, work on yourself, travel, et cetera. I didn't know those were options until I got to college and people started having those conversations about, hey, there's, you know, you don't have to go straight to med school or straight to grad school or straight to that next step and do four, 10 years of, of school straight after unless you want to. Um, you can take a gap year. And that's and I'm glad that that started being a conversation that was accepted by the time I, I finished because I I wouldn't have been able to handle it. And I and I, I I'm very honest with myself when I say that. And that's an honest conversation I had to had to have with my family, I had to have with my friends. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't have been able to to do it. I wouldn't. Like I, I could have probably faked it for like a year and a half, you know what I'm saying? But then I would have been like, nah, <laughs> nah. you know, and I I wouldn't because I wouldn't have been authentic with myself. I wouldn't have been real with how I was doing up here, you know. I needed time. Um, and I, and that time has definitely helped me a lot. I, I feel like I've definitely grown in the past two years, um, and working on this business with the golden Ghost career coaching, working on myself, uh, just overall reflecting, healing, and just taking time, you know, and just really finding stability in myself, finding stability in my mind, finding stability in my villages, you know, in my community, um, just taking that time and just not rushing it, you know, there, yeah. there's no real rush. You know, and and how like as everyone says it. You know, how can you take care of someone else if you haven't taken care of yourself? Right. And if I want to be a doctor and I want to be t- and I want to be a surgeon, and I want to be you know cutting people up and all that and helping them out with heart surgery, and I'm over here struggling with you know whatever you know mental thing I got going on because I didn't take a second to actually take a step back and say, whoa, what's going on? You know, how am I doing? Hey, have we healed? Have we talked about this? I'm not gonna do well in that surgery room, you know. I, and that's a life in my hands. So I can't, I can't, I need to take my time, you know, and I, I really urge anyone that, you know, maybe they're in college, you feel a little burned out, but you also want to go to grad school or you also have, you know, your parents or your, your supporters, they're talking about, hey, you know, what's, what's the next step, what's the next step, what's the next step? Um, well, you're about to, you know, uh, you're trying to work at these top firm companies, uh, but you, you feel, you know, you feel tired, you don't feel ready to start, you don't feel that you're up to it. You know, really, you know, really take a second, take a step back and be like, hey, are you ready to do that thing you said you were supposed to do? Are you ready to take up this position and actually, you know, take off and do everything you got to do? Are you ready for that? Or do you need do you need a month? Do you need do you need a year? Do you need a few weeks? Do you need a therapy session? What do you know? What do you need to get you there? Because you can get there. Absolutely. It's definitely in you. But are you able to be sustainable on that and be real with yourself and be your full self and not just some drone that's, you know, running off fumes. You don't want to put yourself in that position. So that's absolutely, I'm glad that, you know, Momo's Consulting, thank you for, you know, bringing that up. It's, it's important to just check in with yourself and just, and just be real with yourself. Um, Cause you can't be authentic and you can't be that real, you know, you can't be your best version of yourself if you're not taking care of yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm proud of you for figuring that out and, um, you know, helping others with your platform. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. I think we got another question. Can factor is shooting them. Are there any tips for when what you think is being authentic isn't appreciated around me? My team might see my authenticity as some something negative or not embraced. And that could feel very isolating. Um <clears throat> say it again. Let me let me see. what's the question? Uh, are there any tips for when you think um, is being authentic? Isn't appreciated around mm-hmm. me? Okay. Yeah, so when being authentic isn't appreciated. Got it. Um, I don't know. I'm like, how do you know they aren't being authentic isn't appreciated? Like, I feel like um, you know, sometimes when I'm being authentic and I feel like I may be getting a little pushback. I'm steadfast in my position because of the role that I'm playing. 
of you know protecting people so i have to be steadfast in, in that and so eventually people just have to accept it um if they're not accepting it i don't i feel like you're in a place where you shouldn't be if they're not accepting your authenticity that's just Absolutely. that's just my take on it I agree with that. And, you know, take an inventory of, you know, who's around you, whether it's that's your coworkers in the workplace or I know there was a lot of during the pandemic, there was a lot of there's a lot of posts going around. It's like, hey, you know, check your friend group, check your circles. You know, are you really around the people that are going to get to the next step? Are you really around people that are having the conversation you need to be having? You know, if your authenticity and your real self, you know, the things that you're trying to do with people around you, if they're not being appreciated, maybe you shouldn't be around those people. Because if you are genuinely trying to positively inf impact the people around you and they're not receiving that, they're not appreciating that, I mean, you you did your part, you know? Yeah. And you can't be no other way. Who else exactly. you going to be but you? Who <laughs> right. else you going to be but you? Right. So if, you know, people just got to accept you or move on. Or Absolutely. you move on. Yeah. And, and they can't blame you. They can only blame themselves if that's the case. So I'm sorry if yeah, that's what you're going through. Uh, but, hey, you know your worth. Keep it moving. The people that are for you will truly appreciate that. Okay. We got How do you fill your cup? <laughs> that's a good question. Ah, Lord, Anna, like, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> By the skin of my teeth, sometimes I, <laughs> sometimes at the end of the day, I'm spent, like it's over. Um, but you know what? Every night, like, I think I, it's, I think it's sleep, honestly. I think it's sleep that helps me fill my cup because, you know, my days are draining. I'm in back-to-back -back meetings. You know, and the meetings I'm in, it's like, it's about people's lives, like their livelihoods. And, right. you know, a lot of people are going through certain stuff and like, you're trying to help them. And it's a lot. It's draining. So by the end of the day, <laughs> I'm done. Um, but I think like relaxing and being with the family and getting a lot of rest, that's how I refill my cup. Absolutely. And then the next day, I'm able to pour some more <laughs> and give out more. <laughs> right. I just, oh, keep, I just keep going. That's all. I right. just keep going. Anna, yeah. you know I. You Anna, you know I. <laughs> I'm barely <laughs> floating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in survival yeah. mode. <laughs> right. If I survive I think... the next day, I'm happy. That's a win. For me, it's interesting that you just said sleep because I. I've always said I, I really wish we didn't have to sleep. Like, I do love sleep, but honestly, man, sometimes I just want to be a vampire of Twilight and just not be sleeping because that's a whole eight hours. Like, I really be wishing that I could just work that whole eight hours, but obviously I would be spent if I did that. So, um, but how I feel my cup is just being around good people. I feel like as an extrovert, you know, talking to people and having conversation, good conversation, genuine conversation, uh, really replenishes my cup and really... You know, obviously everyone has a social battery. Sometimes I feel like mine can be a little endless, but talking to people and just, you know, spending good quality time with people, especially someone you may not have spent time with uh, in a while, but you were really cool with them way back when, it really is replenishing for me. Um, and I'm sure a lot of extroverts feel that way as well. Uh, so just, you know, being able to have conversations, spend you know quality time with folks definitely re-energizes me when it comes to, uh, starting up my, my next week, but also take it for time for myself as well. You know, I, I watch my Netflix shows, my anime shows, you know, get a little food in, cook here and there when I can, you know. Um, honestly, the business, you know, resumes and, and, and learning about people's stories through working on the resumes is also very replenishing for me. Um, so I'm glad the business doesn't really feel like work per se. Um, and it feels like I'm getting to know somebody through a conversation and then putting that on paper, you know? So that's also very, a good way for me to fill my cup. Uh, and also community service. I really love, you know, helping out when, in any way I can. So like community cleanups or giving out food or soup kitchens or, you know, any any type of event that may be going on where I can volunteer uh, in my area also 
is very rewarding for me and always gives me a really good feeling. Uh, while I'm doing it, cause I'm getting to meet new people in, you know, in my area, and I'm also helping a good cause. Um, and I come home and I feel energized. Um, so that's always good. So that's how I fill my cup. Everyone has their own different ways of filling your cup. Uh, but, you know, realize, you know, what it is that energizes you, uh, what makes you happy and what your self-care also looks like. And make sure to put time in your schedule for those things, because that's how that's how you keep yourself going. If you ignore those parts, if you know if you ignore those things that keep you going, you ignore those things that energize you, that make you happy. You're just going to be a drone that's just working, sleeping, working, sleeping, working, sleeping. You're not doing what it is you need to do after hours or on the weekends that keeps you energized and that keeps you alive. So make sure that you're putting time in your schedule for those things. That's some of the great advice. Some of that I need to take. I need to take some of your advice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember, uh, so, you know, I, I don't know if you use Google Calendar, if you use a different, or you use your phone app uh, for, for your calendar, but a lot of people, uh, and I've done this too, is you, know, you put time in either for sleep or you put time in to hang out with certain friends or like, you know, social time or you can put a block in your calendar. It's like reach out to a friend that you haven't talked to in a while. Just be, live like an hour block for that, you know? And that can be really, really rejuvenating uh, to just have a kind of, if you're an extrovert or if it's just someone that you genuinely care for and you haven't talked to them in a while. So uh, that's definitely a good strategy. Anyone that's listening to, to, to do those things and block out those times and, and leave a reminder too, because there's always times where like I have events planned or I want to do a service event and then I forgot to put it in my calendar and then the event, the event will come and I'm like, I ain't. I'm not ready to go. <laughs> I'm not ready to go. So put, put a little reminder, like a day reminder, a two-day reminder, so you know it's coming up, so you can mentally prepare yourself that you have to be at this certain place to do this thing, or you have to hang out with this friend, you have to talk to this friend, uh, because you'll you'll be glad that you did it. If it's something that you genuinely enjoy, you'll be glad that you did it. Uh, yeah. so definitely, definitely do that, for sure. Facts. So true. So true. That has happened to me, where, you know... <laughs> I didn't really feel like I wanted to go, but once once I went, it actually was helpful um, to reconnect with friends and family. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So we're coming to the end of our time. Uh, if anyone has any last minute quest, oops, someone just threw some can factor. What she say? Uh, like Michelle says, if you take care of the people, the people take care of the business. Absolutely. So take care of Michelle. So take care of the people who is her business. Yep. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, but like I said, thank you, Cam. If anyone has any, <laughs> have any final questions, we can answer them. Um, but in the meantime, mm -hmm. while we're waiting for someone to add in last questions, uh, let them know where you can be reached and what services you offer that they can uh, uh, take part in. Yeah, so I can be reached on Instagram at Michelle Edwards Speaks. Um, I can be reached on LinkedIn. Um, at Michelle K. Edwards and Twitter at Michelle K. Edward without the S. Um, and, you know, tell your corporations, your presidents, your senior leaders, your HR folks to come talk to me <laughs> because I got a wealth of information and a um, wealth of experiences in terms of like uh, wins and failures that we can help other companies um, achieve the progress that we have with high employee engagement, high uh, retention, um, and high uh, diversity uh, stats. And we are basically crushing the diversity in our industry. Mm -hmm. So uh, reach out to us and I could teach you how to do it. Absolutely. Y'all reach out to her, get your company right. She'll do great things for y'all. And like we all know, all those that are followers of your golden goals, we do resume services, LinkedIn services, interview mentoring, networking, mentorship, all the above, cover letters. Uh, we do a lot. So also reach out to us for that. If you do need it for your job search, we are here to help. Um, I don't see any other questions. So... That'll be the end of our session. Thank you so much, Michelle, for being here. I uh, really appreciate your time. Really appreciate talking to you. Drop some good, phenomenal gems in this conversation. So I really appreciate you coming on for episode B of the Golden Glossary series. And uh, look forward to uh, staying in touch with you. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.
Absolutely. Well, you have a great weekend, and uh, we'll too. talk soon, okay? Everyone okay. have a great one. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.